Uh, we'll move over to number two. So this is one our icons upon icons. Does anyone know that they can make custom icons inside Power BI Desktop? Couple nods, couple no's. OK, so this is a trick that we did. So at Power BI Tips, we have uh, a whole blog around how can you add custom icons to any visual or any graphic that you need somewhere else on the page. So in here, um, you could go to this link. I'll hit the link here real quick. This will take us to the blog post, and this is essentially um, in the JSON files, we've been able to code in a bunch of SVG icons that you can use from there. So you can go here in our blog post about halfway down. There's the download link. Uh, it's a free download that you can go get this file from. Here's the icon set. So it's the icon theme file. Download this guy and this could also be used as an example. So if you have SVG icons you want to use for a particular graphic or infographic, you can add your own as necessary and use this file as an example. So we go over here. Again, I downloaded it to wherever the heck Seth puts it. Gosh, got to download the desktop. Well, maybe if you were using your own computer. Yeah, it would help. All right, so here's the icons file. I'll move that over to the desktop. We can go in here and look at this. There's two different themes in here. There's one from Power BI Tips, just all the icons. And Reed Haven's actually partnered with us on this one. He's another MVP. And uh, Reed actually has a classroom theme that he likes to use. And so he had a couple of other styling elements. Just for the icons, we're going to go after the icons theme file. So if I open this, and it's probably going to open Visual Studio, which I don't want. Do you have code on your computer? Visual Studio code. Anyways, if you don't want to look at nasty code, I mean, this is kind of what it's in the file. So you can actually name the icons the way you want them to. So you can name them however you want. We've added a description for each one of those. We have uh, and then some code, this URL coded information. This is the encoded SVG item, that element that you need to render the icons. So we've got all this stuff figured out. These are examples that you can use. You can use polygons and view boxes and all the kind of the other fun things that go along with SVGs as well. So I'll get out of that because we definitely don't need Visual Studio running right now for this one. All right, so that's that is it for that one. Now we'll go over to desktop again and we'll add in here some icons. So first thing I'm going to do is to go over to the view ribbon. Uh, this is all new, by the way. Uh, if anyone hasn't seen this yet, um, I'll do a quick tutorial on this one because this is within the last three months that this showed up. So I'm using the new theme for Power BI Desktop. This is all the ribbon on the top is brand new. Uh, it's in preview right now. I think it'll be going GA usually in about four to five months after it, they preview it. So it's, this has only been out for about two months now at this point, but the ribbons are all named differently now. We now have the specific ribbon for views and theming that we were doing before, all themes you had to do previously were 100% you had to write JSON. There was no way of really understanding the properties. You couldn't change things generically. This theme portion now makes it much easier for you to manipulate and get your way through the theme files. So what you can do now is you can actually in your report, you can select different theme colors directly here. So if I just pick a theme color, it'll automatically color or uh, generate colors for your report based on. So this one colored the background here. It added a, a very weird purple color on the right hand side. All these different elements of the, the theme that is changing for you. Uh, if you click on a chart area or you adjust the colors for something. So if I go over here to the background layer, and click on colors, you'll note that all the colors now down here are now adjusted. So these are all based on that theme property that we see. So if you want to adjust that further, you can go back and you know you can switch them here. Here's the default classic one that was Power BI's default when it came out. Additionally, they have other properties here. So you can, uh, let's go back here to something else and let's customize the theme properties here specifically. So we can actually go to customize this current theme and when I click this, a new window appears, and this is all the properties that are, these are called class modifiers. So before when we were modifying themes, it was individual property by property that you could modify. Microsoft has made a whole class of operators that are generic at the higher level that you can then change many different properties across many different visuals. The colors are pretty much the same. They didn't really change any of the code there. So this is basically letting you pick your eight colors that you like and then the sentiment colors you can also define here as well as well as the divergent colors. So these are for sentiment colors are when you're using visuals like a um, KPI chart. The KPI card has 
red, yellow, green for different sentiment values. So you can tweak those values here, but when you use that card, these are the default values that show up on all the cards. For divergent colors, this is where you would use this in a conditional formatting column. So if I have a number that I want to derive data, this conditionally formatting, this is these are the colors that you would do there. Then it goes through a number of other properties. Um, this is one I think people use the most, text and general. This changes most of the general label properties across your entire report to not be 10 pixels, 10 point. You can change it in size. So this is like by far the biggest complaint I have from people. The report size is too small. I can't read the print. There's only a couple options you can do. You can make the canvas size smaller, which makes your text size look bigger, or you can start futzing with this property now. So now this property adjusts a lot of those other properties across there. So they actually have general items. They have titles, the cards and KPI default items, the tab headers. So these are all classes that you can modify across the entire report now. Same thing for visuals. You have some general properties here you can adjust as well as at the page level and on the filter pane level. So again, trying to bring these features more front and center to you. <coughs> okay, so let me cancel this. Now we'll go back into our icons set here. So we'll go browse for themes. We'll go to the desktop and we'll go grab the Power BI Tips icons version three. When we load that in, uh, it's actually part of the theme file and it's just a section of code that lives in that theme file. So you can merge this with any other theme file you have. It has been successfully loaded and now we can go to our visual and we can start adding those KPIs, those custom ones on top of our visual now. So clicking the visual, we can go over to conditional formatting. We can turn, we pick the column we want. So I'm going to go over here, pick, let's, you know, we'll go after volume or something like that. Let's, you know, you're picking the item from the list here and we pick volume and now I can turn the icons on for the volume column. And so now I get the icons and these are the default ones. But if I want to continue tweaking them, I click into the advanced and now I have those other extra icons. So now you get unlimited amount of other icons that are there. And if you use our theme file, we've already got 50 started for you and you have examples for how you can build your own or add other co custom icons the way you see fit. So we can go in here. I can say we have you know red different triangles. So here's like the cellular signal kind of things. Here's like one bar you know, middle bars, and then this would be like four bars. You can do that, and then it changes there. Um, I liked the sciencey beaker one, so I, I that's kind of one of my favorite ones here. We got no, no beaker science. We got medium science, and then we got full science. If Brian Goodwin's listening, this one's for you, buddy. Uh, you get the you get the data science beaker things. So you can you, you can start adding your own icons. So if you have a way of customizing your report the way you, you your users want to see it, this is a good alternative there, and you can use those icon sets. If I go in here and adjust the uh, cus customize the current theme, I don't think it'll adjust anything. So let me just double check. If I adjust this color and adjust this color, this should be changing that current theme. Save and apply. So it's it should be adjusting my file of theme colors. And now that I've adjusted those two properties, I could export that current theme. I'll also uh, new theme on my desktop. Save that and it should. Open with. Oh, well, you don't have studio code. Let's do notepad. Nope, let's not do notepad. <laughs> that was a bad idea. We'll open in Visual Studio. So what you'll see here is you should see some additional properties that we just modified, those class modifiers. They should now be added to this file, and you should be able to see those in addition to all the icons that we have. Does this thing auto format? Does not look like it's auto formatting. Does anybody know how to auto format in Visual Studio? Chris? Usually this doesn't, if it can. It's still. Control K, Control P. Ah, right click. Okay, got it. Right click. <laughs> So let's see if it added the extra properties. This is all the icon set here. There it is. So there's some data colors. So I adjusted the data color settings and it just dropped in a new list of data colors for you. So it's already taking the theme file that I had, merging your changes on top of it. And then when you export it out, it's giving you that back out. And what I would recommend is download that file, grab the icons that you want, and you just append them in a section called, I'll zoom in here. This is the, sec oops, this is the section you need. Come on, thing. Whoa. We're all going to get dizzy on this one. All right, Visual Studio does not like 
OK, let's try this. Icons is the section you need. So this is the syntax for icons. You basically drop in a section called icons in the JSON file, wrap it in some braces, and throw a bunch of code in there, and then it'll work. So you can literally copy that section out and reuse it anywhere else you need to. I'd recommend doing it that way, better than going to desktop to do everything. It's a lot more painful. 